Today we are going to do a silent practice. Every day we are doing guided meditation. Therefore, you know what to do, how to do it. Let's try this silent practice today.
<clears throat> now observe your mind, observe your body. Your body is relaxed, your mind is calm, tranquil and peaceful. Make a strong determination to practice every day. Understand who you are, how you feel, what you think, where you think. That way you can understand about yourself. May peace be with you. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. Thank you very much. Please open your eyes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, as, as human beings, we all have some challenges, difficulties and problems, you know, when I'm talking to people or when you are meeting people, talking to people, all these people are talking about some challenges, difficulties and problems, right? Very rarely people talk about, oh, I have very peaceful mind, I have perfect day, my family is doing awesome, no problems at all. How many times you hear those things? Instead of those positive things, we always hear, you know, all the challenges people are going through. So I think that is the nature of this existence. So then after you experience that, then you are thinking, I'm too tired, I'm exhausted, you know, too much to handle. Then you are looking for other options to handle those difficult situations. I know that's the one reason you came to the Blue Lotus Temple, look for some inner peace, inner contentment, or balanced mind. So now I'm asking you a question before I go forward. Did you find those things coming to the Blue Lotus Temple? So, you know, coming here, even you have a little glimpse about it. Not perfectly, you had a little peace in your mind. Yeah? Yeah. So, everybody? You have a little peace? You feel good when you come here? Okay, good. Okay, thank you. So, so then people meditate. So I realize just sitting on the cushion and meditating and doing the guided meditation, that's why I didn't do the guided meditation today. Intentionally I did it because when we are doing, when we are guiding, so people really clinging to that experience too. So I can remember, uh, maybe Todd remember that, you know, not anymore, I don't have that. You know, we have a CDs. You know, I had the guided meditation CD, putting out the fire on your mind, remember? And people used to that CD a lot. You know, so many people, you know, listen to that CD. I can remember you know, long time ago, one lady came to the temple, you know, we just opened the gift store, that time we have CDs, then she said, long ago I bought a CD from the temple, I want to buy a new one. Then I asked, why do you need another one? So that one I already got, long time ago, it is so old, it is not working really well, I need a new one. I said, why you need a new one? No need a new one. You know what to do now. Therefore, no need to buy a new one. No, Bhante, without that, I'm, I cannot meditate. So, therefore, I need some, your voice. So, another time somebody came with the, you know, a little recorder. That time we have little recorders. So, then she asked me, can you record your voice? Then I said, that means you are addicted to my voice now. That's not your meditation practice. Then I didn't allow her to buy another CD. I said, maybe later you can buy if you want, but try it without guided meditation. So that's why I said, how did you feel today? 
without guided meditation. Good? Feel good, right? So that's what I, you know, that means you are building your own confidence about your practice. If you are really waiting to hear another voice, that means still you are not strong about your practice. So my point today, to make your practice very strong, few things we have to follow, we have to practice. Not just sitting on the cushion and practicing meditation, that's a big part of it. But people think, when you are sitting on the cushion and practice meditation every day, all my problems solved. No. <laughs> Never happened. You know, even in the Buddhist stories, I don't see that many stories while they are sitting on the cushion, they were attaining to the enlightenment. I don't see that many stories like that. Most of the time people got the wisdom and awareness while they are busy, while they are doing something, but they are continuing this journey, sitting on the cushion and meditating other things. So a few things I want to tell you today to focus on. One thing, so you know, before that, this afternoon I was processing and thinking certain things, then I was thinking, the day I became a monk, now who I am now, is a whole journey, is a process. In this process, who I am right now, what are the things help me to be who I am right now? Number one, is help me to feel like this now, because I found one or more noble people in my life. That's the number one. Because without that, we cannot continue this journey. So, therefore I'm asking you, just coming to the temple, sitting on the cushion, doesn't help you if you don't find a really good guidance as a noble person uh, or friend to help you and you can discuss, you can, you, know, you can talk to that person. So just finding a noble friend is not enough. The noble friend, you can have a conversation with the noble friend. No, first we have to listen to the noble friend. Okay? First you have to listen to the noble friend all the time. The noble friend always, you know, telling you certain things, these, 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 these ideas you have to process. Then you have to ask questions, then you have to build a uh, conversation. You know, I call the discussion. So first find the noble friend, then listen to the noble friend, then they build the discussion with the noble friend you can ask a question. So, then you can process yourself. Otherwise, this mind is so crazy, sometimes you are thinking, I'm doing so well. No, you are not doing so well. On the surface, you feel you are doing well. But underneath, there are so many uh, repressed, uh, latent uh, issues underneath that. If you have a really good noble friend, uh, so that noble friend always point out, no, this is the issue. So, I think it's a very important thing in our life because Bhante Rahul and myself, um, we are always talking about the teaching and practice. We consider we are kind of noble to each other all the time. Uh, Sometimes I say things to him. Then he says, oh, interesting. Then he's listening to that. Then we are sometime, I'm going crazy or something like that. Then he's reminding me that, you know, how about this? So even I'm the senior, it doesn't matter. When we come to the practice, there is no seniority, there is no juniors. Why? Practice is practice. So therefore, please find that person in life. If you cannot find that person, you can be that person by yourself. Some people can do that too, but many people cannot do by themselves. So, number one, find the noble friend, then listen to the teaching with that noble friend is sharing. So, it can be, you know, if you don't have a person, you can say, my noble friend is the Buddha. Buddha is not alive now, but is still teaching is alive. So, therefore, he can listen to, you can listen to his teaching. So then, when you, then you can discuss with those teachings with other people. You know, this is what I learned, now I want to discuss, you can ask questions, then you can grow yourself. I think those three things are very important in my life, because I can remember when I was a young monk, sometimes we have a long night of discussion with our noble teachers. 
it was fun and so i can remember when i was like a teenager like a 19 age 20 like that sometime hours at night we are discussing things sometime my teacher get upset too because we are not sleeping why we had to wake up early in the morning around 4 then you know then we are not wake up we are you know lazy to wake up after we have a long night of talking but i now i'm thinking about my life all those people i build those discussion and listening and talking hours and hours what i'm sharing in the world right now those are the experience i have actually that time i didn't have that much great awareness about it now when i'm reconsider those things i practice i listen i talk and discuss is so powerful to me now it makes sense to me now why i'm processing it now so therefore i'm asking you please follow those three things find the noble friend listen to the teaching with the, that from that noble friend then make the discussion with that noble friend then understand what it is it makes sense okay any questions comment yeah comment yes please Right. Because how do you get to you know to talk to the noble friend mm-hmm. when you just run out the door after the mm-hmm. presentation? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that shoe room is a great place to spend yeah. a Saturday on Saturday. Yeah. You know, the, the, but to yeah. create those relationships, it takes effort. Yeah, we have to open up. You know, we have to open up. Some people, I can see culturally here in this country, you know, this culture, people scare to talk to the strangers. So people, you know, what you learn in the school from your parents, don't talk to the strangers. So I know it is sometimes maybe risky, but still we have to try to talk to those people. I have so many stories like that in my life, talking to the strangers, what I learn, how they help me to learn about their life and their journeys. It's so wonderful to build the conversation with the people. Then we can learn, not just talking what I know, i whatever i know i already know whatever they are going to tell us we don't know so therefore we have to pay attention to those people you know i'm getting better with that now you know you know when people are trying to say something to me i'm trying to listen to it more because i'm always thinking if i don't listen maybe i lose the opportunity how wonderful that so that's why buddha said you know listening and gaining wisdom that's an one way to get the uh, the wisdom listening and gaining wisdom how powerful that thinking and gaining wisdom then meditating and gaining wisdom that's the last one but last one we put in the first then most two important one we are ignoring thinking and gaining wisdom listening and gaining wisdom and meditating and gaining wisdom those are the three things then i said the six things today first find the noble friend then listen to the noble friend then discuss with the noble friend then thinking and gaining wisdom listening and gaining wisdom and meditating and gaining wisdom all those those six things are very powerful uh for your everyday practice uh, you know my point otherwise just sitting on the cushion it doesn't make any sense you know but it's help but now maybe once in a while when you are walking please listen to those wisdom talks other teachers are doing maybe it is not your preference but it's okay to listen so maybe you can learn something i always do that sometime middle of the night i wake up then i'm listen to something <laughs> then all is learning anything else any questions
Right. Yeah, exactly. Always, you know, then you, when you are friends with the monks, then you are helping them, we are helping you. And so then we are sharing. That's a, you know, brotherhood or sisterhood or something, whatever it is, right? It's helping each other. I think we, we, him and myself, we are really doing good with that. Always we are very direct and honest and we are talking and he's suggesting me certain things, I'm suggesting to him certain things. Then we are discussing some, some days we are discussing long hours. <laughs> one time we were around one o'clock and then I said, let's go to bed. <laughs> and you know, that's wonderful. You know, when we are talking about those teaching and practice, it's so powerful. Then we don't feel even we are tired and exhausted. Why is giving you so much love and energy and concern about our journey? So, therefore, don't be afraid to build the discussion, ask questions. And after you ask a question, if somebody gets upset, that's their problem. <laughs> and so, but still we have a right to ask questions. So, when you come to the temple, don't just listen to us. You know, listening is a good thing. But just, then you are, when you don't like it, what you, what we said, don't go with that same mind. Don't go home like that. You know, oh my God, what Bhante Sujata said, I don't like it. Something like that. No, in the same moment as Bhante, even if you don't want to ask in front of the people, when I get up, go to the social room, you can say, Bhante, certain question you said, it doesn't make sense to me. Can you clarify that to me? So I'm ready to explain to you more. So that's the way we are building our energy in this journey. Otherwise, every day you come to the temple, sit on the cushion like an hour and spend time listening to the monks and just go home. Then again you come back, listen and go home. Same. No, there is no uh, process in your life. Does it make sense? Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. She was all anxious about coming here. Uh-huh. I thought the monks were going to you know, kick me out because you know, I'm, I'm a Buddhist or whatever. Uh-huh. I know the Buddha, you know, has, you know, not as strict rules, but especially for monks, right. has avoided that from time mm-hmm. to time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know. You know. Because after having a you know glass of wine, she doesn't want to come to the temple. That's how. You know. I understand how she feels, but you know, this is my way of thinking. Okay. So if you really, you know, I, you know, I cannot explain it, you know, the, in the Pali, you know, the, the language Buddha said. And so Buddha, in that precept, he never said, don't drink. You know, when we see the word by word, we cannot see that. It, you know, he said, where is the limit? So now think about if you are, you know, if you are drinking the glass of wine, it's a very common cultural practice here in this country. If people ask me, I said, it's okay. I don't say no to that. Then, then I'm asking a question. After one glass of wine, can you stop? Then they are rolling their eyes. Then they, ah, uh, like that. So that means they cannot. That is the problem. Not the wine. You know, so now think about, you can, you know, eat sugar. I don't see big difference. Now think about people eating so much sugar, what will happen to them? So they don't know the limits. That is the issue. But if somebody have a glass of wine, I don't think it is a big deal. Does it make sense? Because people don't know the limits. So tell her, you know, if she's drunk, don't come here. <laughs> but, huh? 
<laughs> right, exactly. So, but after she was having a, you know, when you're having a dinner, she has to, you know, maybe there's culture, you know, she's using glass of wine. But I don't say, you know, please come, that's okay. Yeah, so it's totally fine. Don't be sad. So, he, he's really practicing the Buddha's teaching. Then he, he came to me and said, Bhante, you know, my only daughter, there was a big wedding. Right? Now he's not here anymore, he moved out of state. Then he said, even my only daughter's wedding, after I take the precept, I made the vow not to drink. Even that day I didn't drink. I said, good for you. How wonderful. He made that commitment. If somebody can make that strong commitment, I appreciate that too. If somebody have a glass of wine and come to the temple, I don't get mad about it, right? which is totally fine. But if somebody come drunk to the temple, I said, get out. I will say that. So I, because there is a man, like a homeless man. You remember that man, right? Now he's not here anymore. He's always drunk. He always drunk and come and asking money. One day I yelled at, yelled at him. I said, you, don't, can, you cannot come here. So that's a different story. That means, what is the limit? That means there is no awareness. So you can explain to her about it. Right? One day maybe she, maybe she oh no, I don't want to drink and, you know, no glass of wine, even that, but still I go to the temple. So therefore we have to invite her, make her comfortable her first to come here. So tell her that. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Sometimes people are uncomfortable because this is unknown to her. She doesn't know what it is. You know, sometimes people think it's a cult. It's another cult group meeting, you know. So, so many people, you know, last 22 years, people came here with fear. Yeah. So one time I remember, um, I was outside, there's a young lady, like your age, you know, walking around the building. I was outside in the summer day. Then she asked, this is the Buddhist temple? I said, yes. I said, I'm the monk of the temple. So my doctor said, go and practice meditation at the temple. But I'm scared, I'm Catholic. I said, so? But therefore, you know, I don't want to come inside. I feel lots of fear in, inside me because if I go inside, I'm offending to my religion. I said, no, we are not making anybody religious here. You know, just check first. Then she said, I don't know. Now she's almost came here, but still uncomfortable to come in. Then I said, let's go, let's go. You know, then I was trying to comforting her. So then she came inside. How wonderful. She just came. She didn't see the Buddha. Only thing she sees the Jesus. Oh wow, Jesus is here. She said, she didn't see the Buddha. I said, how wonderful, are you happy now? Then she said, yeah, I, yeah, I'm very happy. I feel comfortable now, Jesus is here. I said, then don't worry, you can practice meditation with the Jesus. I said that, okay? So then, now she's coming, you know, it's so funny. I didn't see her, you know, um, you know recently at the temple. So. Then I can see she's in the back, you know, back row and meditating. Then she always kind of turning her chair toward, you know, Jesus. She's a little off. But I'm the only person know that, but people are not, maybe people are thinking about it, but people are not making any comment. So then, then she's looking at the Jesus and meditating, but when I'm talking, she's turning her head towards me. Then listen to me. Then a couple of weeks she did like that. I was laughing inside me. Then little by little, what happened? She totally changed her posture. Now she's looking at me straight. Now I think she doesn't have that issue anymore. Why? It is a fear base. So what I did, I make her comfortable. Okay, you can practice with the Jesus. <laughs> so therefore, if you want to one day sit down and looking at the Jesus, I'm totally fine with that. So, most important, just do the practice. <laughs> so, therefore, we didn't build another religious place for people to become religious here. No, we build this place to people to understand who you are, how you feel, you know, your inner turmoils. So, that's what we are helping here. So, that's the purpose. Okay, thank you so much, everybody, and thank you so much for coming. Thank you.